The Rebbe told us to limit children's exposure to non-kosher animals, even pictures of them. But in the Talks and Tales publication, there was an entire nature section that sometimes included pictures of non-kosher animals. How can we explain that contradiction? I'm very, very good at theory. When it comes to practice, that becomes another story. Especially since whatever I'm saying is going to be held against me until the end of time. First of all, when we talk about this talk of the Rebbe, about children not being exposed to non-kosher animals as mascots, there's a story, there's a simple story that is associated with that event, with that sikh. And that is that there was a certain Jewish publication, a very famous Jewish publication, that you had a comic strip and they used a mouse as their uh, feature, Mendel the Mouse. And it bothered the Rebbe. And there was a period of time where they changed it from a mouse to a duck. And the reason was because the Rebbe Poshet saved that magazine from bankruptcy. But after using the duck for a few years, they went back to the mouse. And I believe this bothered the Rebbe very much. I guess they went back to the mouse because somehow Mendel the mouse was cuter than Daffy Duck. And the Rebbe spoke to Sikh. There are two issues. One is educating our children about the world, that they should know about God's amazing creation, which includes animals and plants and minerals and forests and oceans and deserts and sky and seasons and rain and all the things that the nature's wonderland discuss. That's a very desirable thing. The children should have a sense of the awe and the greatness of Hashem's world is an incredible thing. And of course, it includes many, many different types of life, including non-kosher life, including uh, species of animals that are very violent, that kill to eat, and they have, they're very aggressive, and so on. But then there's another thing, and that is personalizing these animals, becoming friends with them. And this is mostly when they become mascots, when they become dolls, what the children play with, or they become characters in children's books. The children look at their pictures and hear a story, and they represent a certain creativity or ingenuity or deviousness, and the children relate to these characters. This is what's bothering the Rebbe. The Rebbe Wants us, wants us to introduce our children to the Abishta's world. With the emphasis on the word Abishta, not only on the word world, which touches on your second question, should we show our children videos of National Geographic? It's very difficult for me to answer this question in such a public forum. I, I, don't, I don't think it's a simple question. In other words, I think every situation is different. I think every set of parents is different. The underlying issue is when you show your children National Geographic, what are they seeing? Are they seeing nature or are they seeing God's world? And that has a lot to do with your parenting. Just showing them these films, especially since a lot of these films have a considerable amount of violence and other imagery that is undesirable for children. Whatever you mean to show them may not necessarily be what they're going to see. So should you or should you not show your children films of nature and things of the sort? The answer is it needs to be inspired, it needs to be filled with a sense of seeing the beauty of it and seeing the purpose of it and seeing God behind it, which is an educational principle. In other words, you can't just put a film on and walk out of the room. It's about teaching your children. And that's why it's so subjective. And you know and I know that there are many people who are very happy to put on the National Geographic because they don't have to be parents for the next 55 minutes. The computer will be. And that's where this becomes a subjective thing. That ever doesn't think that introducing children to nature means that becoming their life. Their life is how nature is God's. And they're not going to get that from National Geographic. They're going to get that from you. 
the immediate issue about the non-kosher animals is that when we have stuffed animals, or we have characters in a book or in a cartoon, um, or anything children objectify, relate to like another person almost, we don't want those characters to represent the character traits that have to do with violence, that have to do with killing, that have to do with hurting others, and because we don't want the child to, do, to, to relate in a favorable way, in a positive way to those characteristics. And therefore, the Rebbe says, give them mascots of kosher animals. Make the caricatures, make the, the characters in a comic strip or in a child's book where animals are representing children or personalities kosher. So that the child is looking at this animal and in his mind he's imagining this animal with this character. But if the animal is not kosher and he knows that this animal's tendency is to kill, to eat, he relates to that animal in a very personal way. It becomes almost like another human being because that's how the child is perceiving it. That's the issue that the Rebbe is talking to. The Rebbe didn't have an issue with children going to zoos or observing other natural phenomena. But again, it always needs to be inspired with the fact that this is Hashem's world rather than Chas Shalom, not Hashem's world. So there's two issues here that you're raising and you're joining them together. The first is how do we deal with that sikh? And I think I answered that question correctly. I believe I answered the question correctly. The Rebbe does not want children whose to best friend to be a teddy bear because it's a bear. And the child knows what a bear is, understands the character of a bear, and as a consequence, doesn't perceive the character of a bear as inappropriate. And it is inappropriate. He's a predator. And the same is true of a lion, or of a leopard, or of a tiger, or of a whatever animal it is. The second question that you're joining with this is, what does it mean giving our children a healthy education about the Abishta's world? And this is a very serious issue because we believe very strongly in Tara Sakaidish. We, we don't believe in Tara Umada and Tara. We don't believe that we want our children to have a well rounded education. We believe we want our children to have a Jewish education, period. How is this Jewish? It's Jewish when it's inspired by the Kaddish Baruch. Hu. And it's inspired by the Kaddish Baruch Hu because the child sees how you perceive it. And 80% of it is not what you say, but how you perceive it. You know, you have what they call kosher videos. What are kosher videos? That they take out the lines about evolution. <laughs> the Israelis have produced kosher videos. The National Geographic films, they just take out the, 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 you know, the, the narration that's to do with evolution and so on is removed. And they put God in instead. But otherwise, it's the same film with the violence and with the killing and the hunting. And all of this is a subjective question because you want your children to see God not animals killing other animals to eat. And if they see God, and as a part of God's creation, there is a cycle of life, it's a very different issue. And honesty with self about how we are providing this material to our children is critical. Because if you want to fool yourself, it's very easy to do.